Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array, and welcome to our sixth video of our Ultimate Premiere Pro Basics course. We just finished going over how to work with audio in Premiere Pro. Now, we're on to color correction. So, let's get started with the sixth video. You've made it to the final stage of the editing process before exporting, color correcting your footage. Before we begin looking at how to color correct your clips, it's important to remember that color correction should be the very last stage of your video editing process. After all your footage has been added, fine-tuned, and you're happy with the progression from start to finish. In filmmaking, this stage is known as picture lock, meaning that your visuals, apart from color, are locked and that you aren't going to make any changes. It's essential to do color correction after this stage because color correcting can sometimes be very time-intensive and frustrating and it can be a waste of time to color correct a piece of footage and then decide later, actually, I don't want this clip in the final version of your video. Then all that work goes to waste. So now let's go through the process of color correcting. It may help you to go to your workspace tabs and choose the color workspace. Here you should see two new panels, your Lumetri color panel and your Lumetri scopes. If you right click your Lumetri scopes, you can select a variety of graphs to look at. Each will tell you specific information about the color and exposure of your clips. But for right now, let's just stick with the default one, called Waveform RGB. Now let's take a look at the Lumetri color corrector. There's lots of different ways that you can correct color in your footage, but this is probably the easiest and most user-friendly. There's a lot of different sections that each play a different purpose, and you can understand what they might be doing in each one from its name. Because this is a beginner's guide, we're going to be sticking mainly to the basic correction section. Click on it to expand it and you should see at least three different sections. White balance, tone, and saturation. When color correcting, these are three of the basic things that you want to be trying to account for. Let's start with white balance. This refers to the color of your footage and specifically what the color of an object looks like that in real life is truly white. So if we take a look at this piece of footage from outside in the snow, we know that the snow should be white, but it doesn't look like it, does it? It looks really yellow. We can change this by correcting the white balance in one of two ways. You can adjust either of these two sliders and try to manually bring the color back to what it looks like in real life. This slider controls the difference between yellows and blues, and this one controls the difference between greens and purples. Or the second option is to choose the eyedropper here and select a point of your clip that you know should be truly white. So let's select a point here, and Premiere has automatically corrected it for us. It may or may not get it spot on, so feel free to use this as a starting point and to make smaller adjustments from there. Next is the tone section. Here's where you can increase or decrease the brightness of different elements of your clip. Here you have two general sliders and four specific sliders. Exposure will control the overall brightness of your clip, and contrast will control how dramatic the difference is between the bright and dark parts of your image. You'll also notice that, for example, if we increase the exposure, our waveform graph goes up and if we decrease it, it goes down. This graph shows you the spread of color throughout your shot. This graph might be difficult to understand at first, but the key thing to keep in mind here is that it shows the brightness of your footage on a scale from 0 to 100. The lower, the darker. The higher, the brighter. If something reaches all the way down to 0, like so, the graph is telling you that there's elements in your shot that are so dark they register as completely black. This means that there's no detail or texture that you can observe from them. And if we take it all the way to the opposite extreme, making our footage extremely bright, it will make parts of it pure white, with no detail either. This is what's known as clipping, and as you can see, it's an undesirable look for your footage. Something to watch out for when correcting your image is to make sure that elements of your shot are not clipping. Sometimes it's impossible, like if you have footage of someone standing near a window on a sunny day. But as a general rule, when possible, try to avoid clipping. You'll also notice that if we increase our contrast, our graph will spread out. This is showing the separation of brights and dark sections of your video. The next section is our more specific sliders, which each control a different part of the image. For each of their names, you can understand what aspect of the exposure you're impacting. Whites, for example, will impact primarily the brightest parts of your clip, while blacks will control mainly the darkest parts of your image. Highlight and shadow work in a similarly contrasting way only coming closer together towards the medium exposed sections of your shot. By manipulating each of these parameters, you can have a great deal of control over the look of your shot. You can create something very dramatic, 
or raise the blacks completely for a very stylistic faded film look. The unfortunate part of color correction is that there's no true answer for how your edited footage should look. I'm sure we've all seen traditionally shot movies, like modern romantic comedies that have a very realistic color tone with a more saturated and vibrant look. But we've also seen movies like The Matrix and Fight Club where the color tone is pushed to the absolute extreme. And even further, we have movies like The Blair Witch Project which seemingly go out of their way to make the footage look terrible. The thing to remember is that each of these had a specific purpose to serve with the color and exposure they chose. So is your video dark? Happy? Does it take place in a cold tundra or a hot desert? Or maybe you're freelancing and your client just wants a quote unquote good looking video. If that's the case, the only suggestion I would make is to try to create a visually pleasing look that stays realistic, like you're capturing the best version of real life. There are far more parameters that we can investigate when it comes to color correction, but seeing as this is a beginner's course, we're gonna keep it fairly simple for now. But if you're really stuck, I wanna show you a little trick that I do from time to time. If you open up your creative section, you'll see your footage on another screen and a looks tab above it. If you click the arrow to the right of your new video box, you'll start to cycle through some preset looks. If you're absolutely stuck, you can find one of these that you like and use it as a starting point. There's a lot to choose from. And if you find one that you like, but it's just a little too extreme, right below it is an intensity slider. Slide it to the right to increase the intensity of that look and slide it to the left to dial it back. Now you can go back and make color changes with this as your starting point, closer to what you really like. On top of that, within the creative section you have more stylistic options including faded film, increasing the sharpening of your footage, making it pop a little bit more if it's a little bit blurry. You can also increase or decrease vibrance and saturation. The difference between these two is that saturation is an overall control of how prominent the colors of your shot are displayed while Vibrance is almost like a smart thinking filter that controls colors that are not already more prominently displayed. It also tends to be more forgiving when it comes to the look of skin tones. And if you're feeling really adventurous, you can play with the highlight and shadow tint wheels. These individually control the coloration of either the darker or brighter sections of your footage. They will spill over into each other, but it gives you a bit more control over making different parts of your clip separated by their color and using this balance slider can prioritize one over the other. But let's just say that you have a lot of different shots that were done with a similar lighting setup and camera. How would you go about making sure that every shot was color corrected in the same way? There's two different options, a hard way and an easy way. We're gonna show you both because the hard way gives you more flexibility in case you need to make some changes to individual clips that stick out. But the easier way is faster and it'll save you a lot of time. The hard way is to take an example clip and color correct it the way that you want, then go into the effect controls and copy the Lumetri color effect. This effect contains all the changes you made within your Lumetri color panel, so long as your clip was highlighted while you were making these changes. Now copy it with Control or Command C, and then paste it to your other clips by selecting it and then hitting Control or Command V. You can do this either one at a time or by selecting multiple clips by clicking and dragging to select. The result is that each of these clips will then hold its own color correction effect. But the easier way is to create an adjustment layer. This is a layer that will stretch over top of your entire timeline and anything you do to it will be done to any clips that fall underneath it. So to do this, go to your project manager and make sure that it's highlighted. Then go to File, New, Adjustment Layer. It will recognize the sequence settings that you're working with and as long as you don't have any unique plans of your own, select OK. Now your adjustment layer can be found with your other footage. Drag and drop it over top of the footage that you want the changes to be made to, and nothing should happen. Now click on your adjustment layer and go to your Lumetri color panel. Here you can make your color corrections as normal, but when you're finished, you'll notice that all the clips underneath it have the changes applied to them as well. That's because you made changes to your adjustment layer, and your adjustment layer made changes to everything underneath it. Just make sure that your adjustment layer is spread out over all the clips that you want to have the change made to, and that there's no clips that you don't want to have included with this color correction. And guys, that's a very basic look at how to color correct your footage inside of Premiere Pro. In the next video, we're going to wrap things up by looking at our final stages and how to export our videos. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope to see you in the next video.